Model engineering for beginners. Why did I need to make a new piston for this old grasshopper beam engine? Please keep watching the video and it will become very apparent why I needed to make a new piston. The real problem with this engine is the flywheel is too small so there is insufficient kinetic energy at the top and the bottom of the stroke. I can't really do much about this so it's on with the show. It's quite an interesting old engine, well made really, but it's in such a terrible mechanical state. The crankshaft is slightly out of true. The eccentric that controls the valves is simply a push fit on the crankshaft and there's no key in there. The key sheared off long ago, mainly because the eccentric throw exceeds the valve travel. I'm going to have to probably make a new eccentric to the correct throw to move the valve the required amount over the ports. Here you see me turning over the engine with some compressed air fed into it. It does actually run, but it runs like this very lumpily and blows past the piston at every stroke. So it's really time to dismantle this engine and have a look inside it and see just how bad it is. As I said earlier, the eccentric is wrong. There is too much travel on the valve rod, so you have to have the nuts both slack like this. This is no good at all. I'll have a look at the valve and the valve chest first to see whether I can get some more clearance in there. Here is the offending eccentric, and as you can see there's been some violence on it. Someone's tried to realign the eccentric by tapping it round with a screwdriver. It's an easy enough job to make a new eccentric sheave, and I think I'll make one that locks to the shaft with a grub screw. First of all, I'm going to need one of these. I need somewhere to put the parts that are removed from the engine, so they don't get lost. Here are the parts that hold the beam to the piston rod. So now, I can swing the beam out of the way to allow me to work in the cylinder region of the engine. It's time to try and remove the cylinder head. An easy way to do it is to move the piston up and down quickly, but in this case it didn't work. So the next thing to do is to very carefully put in a minimum of pressure on, use a sharp knife, tap it with a hammer, and it will break the seal. After which, on this engine, you can remove the piston and the valve in one operation. Looking at the components, I can see that the cylinder's in very good order, and the valve's pretty good too. The first thing I want to do is to be able to look at the piston itself. So remove the part that connects it to the beam, then remove the piston from the cover assembly. Once you get the piston out, have a look at the components. They're very oily, so it's time really to give them a clean with a rag. The cylinder bore is very good indeed, I'm quite pleased about that because I have seen some bad examples, but the piston is a rattle fit in the bore. By placing it in the cylinder you can see that there's lots of side play on it. This is down to the piston itself not being the right size, and the rings are terrible. They do actually fit in the bore, but with no resistance, no spring at all, so they're just going to pass air or steam, as you heard when I was running the engine on compressed air. The slide valve is in fairly good condition, but as a matter of course I would reface it anyway, using some 800 grade wet or dry sandpaper and a drop of oil, on a very level surface. Here I'm using the surface of my bandsaw. Once the surface of the valve is relapped, clean it thoroughly with some solvent, then re-oil and fit it back in the valve chest. I'm temporarily putting the engine back together because I want to rule out of the equation a faulty valve. I've seen many small Stuart engines with the slide valve in the wrong way round. You can't do that on this engine though. Right, once it's back together, put some air into the engine and move the valve. You will see as you pull the valve up, the piston goes up, and as you push the valve down, the piston goes down. The cylinder on this engine is in very good condition and it's very well made. So all I need to do is make a new piston and rod for it. I will cover this in the next video of the series, part two. As the short series progresses, I hope to cover all the major problems that I find with the engine, the crankshaft, the eccentric, and finally the painting and cleaning up of the parts. And I'll show it at the end, finished. All I have to show for it at the moment is just a box of bits, but I'll get there very soon. The engine is now back together and running on compressed air on the bench. It has a new piston with a silicon o-ring, Far better than the old one, which had cast iron piston rings that were a rattle fit in the bore. So the compressed air or steam now moves the piston instead of blowing past. The main problem with this engine is that it is brutal. The cylinder bore is one and a half inches in diameter, 
and the rest of the engine is far too small to cope with this power. When the engine was in its original state, blowing past the pistons with hardly any power at all, requiring about 50 to 60 psi to function, it was fairly quiet, well apart from the sound of all the air passing the piston. But now nothing passes the piston, and the piston moves from top to bottom in the cylinder very efficiently. In this video when you see the engine running slowly, it's only running on about 10 psi, which is pretty good really, before it wouldn't even start below 50 or 60. One or two things I'm not really happy with with the overall design of the engine, which I've just mentioned, and the fact that the engine is on a soundboard, which is the base, a hollow box, so even the tiniest mechanical noises are amplified by the sound box. One solution that I did consider was to sleeve the cylinder down to one inch. If you look at the Stuart beam engine, that's about right, a one inch cylinder and a flywheel of this diameter. If the flywheel was twice this size and a lot heavier, then it would be better, because the flywheel would move the engine over top dead centre far more easily. Normally I would use early admission for a steam engine, but you can't on this. When I set the valve time into early admission, there just is not enough kinetic energy on the flywheel to push it over the admission point, so the engine is currently set for late admission after top dead centre, which is never a good idea because there's nothing to cushion the piston at the end of each stroke. That's why you can hear some more mechanical noise than I would like. The valve's better though. I machined the valve so that the travel is much improved and I also made an ornamental valve nut for the top of the spindle. When working on these old type steam engines, made many years ago, sometimes by people with a lot of skill, sometimes not, you have to have a very sympathetic approach to the renovation, otherwise you may as well just buy the castings and make a new one. This is about as far as I'd like to go with this engine, and it runs very well. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.